I was still lukewarm, you know, I was living to follow Christ, but I was also dibbing and dabbing in sin. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. When I think of my story and my journey, I'm like, yo, I could have been dead. So we're gonna be focusing on Ephesians. Ephesians 5 is where we're gonna start and then we're gonna jump down to six and read from six to 21. So let us read. So it reads, imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Verse 4. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. And this is why it said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Amen. Verses 15 through 21 are like the key verses that we will be focusing on. And it says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. I'm gonna read that again. Don't act thoughtlessly, carelessly, as if you don't care, um, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ amen let us pray father thank you so much for this moment Thank you for your word, God. I pray, Lord, that your word will transform us from the inside out. God, allow your word to do something new in and through us. Lord, use me to share my testimony, to bring glory and honor and praise to your name, God, and allow the Holy Spirit to work through me. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. What we want to focus on today is, is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, not being drunk on much wine or alcohol and also um just living in purity so um yeah we're gonna be talking about uh, modeling christ imitating him and all that we do and i also want to encourage you all um to really not be drunk on much wine like i there's no other way i can put it of course i'm gonna be more sensitive about this topic because this is a testimony for me this is my ministry um praise god i never would have thought that god would be using me in this area for ministry or just to share a testimony but he is and i'm thankful to him for it so um yeah let's let's hop into my testimony so dui testimony y'all if you know me or if you've been following me on this journey then you know i started my channel about three weeks before i turned 25 so boom i started my channel with intentions on encouraging people to live to follow christ and i was really excited like all things christ all things kingdom um vlogging editing i was excited so i started my channel but when i started my channel um to encourage people to live to follow christ i myself i wasn't fully living to follow christ now my heart was in a posture of or I guess, yeah, I would say my heart. My heart was always for Jesus. 
Um, but that's again, it's it's a process. It, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, it's that process of sanctification. But okay, my heart was in a was in a posture to live to follow Christ. God knew my heart. He knew my vision for this for this platform. However, I wasn't fully following Him. So about three weeks after I turned 25. Um, I ended up going to a family function. It was a family member's birthday party. And again, I was still lukewarm. You know, I was living to follow Christ, but I was also dibbing and dabbing in sin. Um, and that sin happened to be drinking, let alone drive, drinking and driving. But I was still like drinking, you know, I was still trying to live for God, but I'm like, look, I'm finna drink. I'ma still drink. It's okay because why not, you know? So before I left, the house um i remember my mom telling me like hey Mo, do you want to uh, leave your car home and drive with me so that you don't have to drive and i'm like no nah, mom good because we're supposed to be going to um we're supposed to go downtown after this party and we're gonna like go out um and that's just the whole that's revelation within itself because i was so focused on the next destination before i even reached my first i don't like it before i reached my first destination so I'm like, no, mom, I'm good. I'm going to drive my car. So she's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. So boom, got to the party, drinking. Uh, my dad offered to buy me another drink. I didn't turn it down. Fast forward, my mom comes to me again. Hey, Mo, I'm about to head out. I'm about to go home. Do you want to leave your car here? And we can come back and pick it up in the morning. Um, that way you don't have to drive. Me, no, mom, I'm good. Like, we're still going to go out after this. Go ahead. You, I'm fine. My mom's like, you sure so fast forward y'all we ended up leaving the party and nobody had plans on going downtown we were done we were like everybody go home that's it and that's all and i'm like okay cool i'm only 15 minutes away from home this should be a breeze let me you know let me just go home so i'm on my way home y'all i was pretty messed up like i'm swerving i'm driving i'm on the phone just doing a lot and um all i know is that i see lights flashing behind me so i'm like okay this is it i'm done right so i get pulled over um the cop gets out the car and he's like hey have you been drinking and i'm like yeah like i had a few drinks but you know i'm, I'm almost home so he's like hey i'm gonna need you to step out the car so i stepped out the car um you know how you have to walk in a straight line so i did that passed it then it was time for the breathalyzer and I failed. So after I failed, he um, was like, okay, Miss Hurt, we're gonna have to um, take you to the station. Like you, you pat, I mean, you failed the test. Um, clearly you've, you've had too much to drink. So we're gonna have to take you to the station. So the cop ends up like taking me in, puts me in handcuffs. At this point, I'm crying. If you know me, y'all, you know I am super emotional, so I am in tears. And I always thank God, like up until this day, I thank God for sending an angel cop, y'all, because he was a Caucasian man, but he was so, so, so nice. He was so kind and patient with me. Even with me crying and like not knowing what's going on, he was still like, hey, Miss Hurt, like it's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna get you to the station so that we can, you know, get your information and stuff in the system. So yeah, I get there, boom. I get charged with a DUI. So of course I had to go to court and um, I had to go through this whole process of having this device in my car. So annoying. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a, a clip um, just to let y'all know how annoying it was. But I had to use that for, or have that for um, over a year because I fell short. Uh, even after I got charged with it, I still fell short. But boom, that was pretty much, that's pretty much my DUI story. So, um, I said all that to say, God has saved me, um, he has kept me, and honestly, I would not have made it without him. Now, I've had, again, I've had those moments where I've um, fallen short of his glory, even after that experience, but again, this is a whole learning process and a learning journey, um, but I am truly thankful. I'm thankful for every single um experience I've had because it's just shown me that I cannot do this on my own like if it's not by his grace and his strength and his might y'all I just can't show up and do it on my own um but to go into the back into the word I really want to focus on Ephesians 5 and specifically like just being filled with the Holy Spirit when we think of like drinking 
and um what we like to call it is having fun or living um we're not being mindful of how we're grieving the holy spirit you know as god has used me in this area in this minute of this area of ministry i've become so sensitive to him just knowing like he can feel those voids any void that i have feeling like oh i just i just want to have this drink because i just want i've had a long week or i had a long day i just want to feel at peace we can have all of these like misconceptions of living life as christians having a good time not even understanding um that every time we choose and i'm not sitting here saying stop drinking you're a christian you're like this is not what this video is about one i'm sharing my testimony but two i really just want to encourage us to be more mindful and sensitive of the holy spirit and know that he is so powerful he dwells within us he's a person he dwells within us and because he lives within us we're able to invite him in in those moments where we feel like we need to have a drink we need to have fun we need to fill these voids um to get us through a day through the day i also just think about um verses 15 through 21 be careful how we live don't live like fools but live like those who are wise and make the most of every opportunity in these evil days um verse 18 don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life instead be filled with the holy spirit we we have to be sober-minded the moment we give the enemy a foothold to come in whether that's drinking whether that's drinking and driving um whatever that may be but the moment we give him a foothold the bible says that we are to be sober-minded because the enemy prowls around um looking for someone to devour first peter this passage is titled be holy and i have here in my notes the flesh is temporary so this passage is titled be holy verse 13 first peter verse 13 it says therefore with minds that are alert and fully sober set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when jesus christ is revealed at his coming again um living for god first first peter chapter 4 um, jump down to verse 7 the end of all things is near therefore be alert and of a sober mind when I think of my story and my journey I'm like yo I could have been dead you know like I could have I could have not made it through that night I could have gotten into a really bad accident um, thank God I was the only one on the road I do remember that so I, do, I don't have to be here today sitting here telling y'all like yo God really saved me that night again the cop that he sent was an angel cop I could have been in the bushes somewhere shot you know what I mean and I'm, I know I'm thinking of the worst of the worst but let's just be honest you know God saw fit for me and said hey I'm gonna use that for my glory I did run to alcohol very frequently so to know um, that I don't run to that or I'm asking now when I feel like, oh, I need a drink, whether that's a glass of wine, whether I just need a cooler. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to, to come in and fill those voids. So praise God. I didn't think this video was going to be this long, um, but I, I just thank God for this opportunity. And I thank you all. If you made it this far, God bless you. And I believe that God um, ministered to you today in some way, shape or form. So I'm going to close us out in prayer. Um, so let's pray. Father, you are so good. You're so holy, you're so faithful, you're so worthy to be praised. God, we just thank you for this hour. God, I know um, there are so many people that you wanted to minister to today, God, and I know that you did exactly what it, what, what it is that you needed to do, and we just thank you for that. I thank you for using me for your glory. I thank you for bringing me to this place of maturity, um, bringing me to this place of salvation, delivering me from every single um, thing, the bondage, the um, just just the old way of living. I thank you, God. I thank you that you were so intentional with me picking up my cross to follow you, feeling as though um, I could be lukewarm on this journey. And I just thank you, Lord, for just showing me that 
um, if we're going to be all in for Christ, then we have to be all in. So God, thank you for teaching me the lessons. God, thank you for the blessings that I've gained from this experience. God, I pray that my story and my testimony, Lord, will only be used for your glory and your glory alone. Father, we just thank you yet again. We honor you. God, we praise you for who you are. For in Jesus' name, amen. Y'all, that's it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share it too. Um, but yeah, I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.